Hi, in our previous episode, our intrepid adventurer was repairing an Onkyo TXSR607 surround sound thingamajig receiver, and it had a non working vacuum fluorescent display on the front VFD. Although, uh, like, the audio section worked and everything was fine, and all the power supplies were fine, except for one which was traced down to on a different board to the front panel vacuum fluorescent display board. This is why we left the previous video, because the intrepid adventurer didn't have time to finish it off that day, but he's back today to determine to find this fault, because it was traced down to this board here, and the uh, negative 35 volt supply voltage minus VP here, which was not being generated, which is the negative voltage required for the vacuum fluorescent display, and that was not on the vacuum fluorescent display board, it had to go through yet another board over here on the side and then through a right angle board uh, into this uh, uh, power supply video mux. It's actually got a video mux on there so it muxes all the videos and things like that. So it was narrowed down to that and when we left off we had actually uh, tested this uh, transistor here. So we had that and put it on an external transistor tester, measured fine, it detected it as a transistor, it had gain, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good. There could be some weird, obscure high voltage breakdown in the part. When you've got semiconductors like this, they can actually um, do, you know, weird and exotic things if Murphy's not on your side that day. But anyway, we're going to call that good. We could put in a replacement, but I think that's okay. So it's got to be some other part here. But unfortunately, we can't power this all up and uh, then start probing voltages. The uh, all the the transistor was on the top through hole, but the other parts are surface mount on the bottom here, and you can't do that because the board has to plug into this right angle board over here, which then has to go over to the display board in the front, which then also goes down to this bottom main uh, power amplifier motherboard, which also eventually goes over to the mains power supply soft start switch. So in order to power the thing up, um, all these things have to be connected and it's, otherwise it doesn't work, it doesn't power it up. So unfortunately, um, yeah, unless we hack it, it's not easy to do that. So we're not going to bother to do that. But I'm 99% sure that the fault's going to be within here. We've tested this transistor. I think I tested that Zener, although this is a 36 volt Zener, so unless you take that out of circuit and hook it up to an external power supply, my 121GW multimeter here only tests up to uh, 15 volts. So unfortunately, uh, yeah, we won't be able to test that unless we hook it up to a power supply. But anyway, I did actually measure that uh, and it was a diode in one direction, so it's not like it's open or anything. And these caps look okay, although I haven't taken them out, but really a cap like that wouldn't cause a complete failure in this. So it's got to be one of the parts here. I think I might have measured that diode and it was okay. But anyway, I think what we've got left is we're going to go through and systematically test every single component in here until we find it. We'll desolder every component if we have to. So I we'll bet we can measure uh, the diodes, we can measure the resistors, although uh, you know, it's unlikely a resistor's uh, gone open or something. Although this one up here, this is curious, it's got list here. Uh, what this means is that it's a select on different model. So we've got the SR607 up here, so it should be a 2.2 ohm, but I don't know why it's so drastically different. Look, 2.2 ohms, half watt, or 82 ohms, half watt. It just seems ridiculous, um, <laughs> that spread in values. But anyway, I don't know if anyone's got any info about that model and why it's 82. It's got a radically different type of display or something. I I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, let's systematically test every part until we find the culprit. If we don't find anything, well, then uh, go deeper down the rabbit hole. But I, I hope it's in there. Okay, so let's just check that Zener again. We can at least uh, check one direction. Yep, see? So it's, you know, it's at least a diode -y. Um, so it's not obviously blown open or anything like that. Yep, the other diode is on top here, so it's a through-hole jobby. That's good, 0.55, that's okay for a, uh, you know, like a, a, well, yeah, 1N4003, that's hunky-dory. Let's not look at the caps, let's measure the easy stuff, we'll measure the resistors, let's see if one, if one of these is open. Um, that would certainly uh, explain it. 
Okay, we've got 220 ohms, 1 watt R9001, 1 watt here. Had to be on the front because the surface mount 1 watt would be quite big. 215, yeah, good enough for Australia. And R9010, and R9010, we've got the SR607, so we need 2.2 ohms. And it's that one there. Yeah, that looks like 2.2. Pain in the ass to get vertical one here. Not sure if you can see that. That should be 2.2. Hello. I'm making contact with that. Is that open? There and there. There and there. Solder joints look good. It's open. Ha! We shot the probes together. <laughs> wow. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. That one is open. There it is. 90, 90, 10, uh, which is a 2.2 uh, watt, half, half watt. So, you know, it, it's a power jobby. So this thing is going to heat up um, and it, it's gone open. That would explain why we're not getting our negative VP here. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, now that's kind of embarrassing. That was just uh, too, oh, fixed exposure there because of the white paper. If you don't know, you know, you put the white paper in here, then everything else is dark. So you've got to like fixed exposure and overexpose the damn thing. Anyway, don't count your chickens yet. Um, but we've found an open resistor, which should explain why we're not getting the voltage there. So that's all it was. All I had to do was <laughs> not give up and just spend another five minutes on this. But yeah, I had other stuff to do yesterday, so I released the video. And, uh, yep, that's a, potentially all it is. That's the culprit. That explains it. Now, I'm probably 90% confident if I replace that resistor, it's going to work again. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's failed due to, uh, like, you know, overcurrent somewhere else. Because our transistor measures fine. Our diode measures fine. This resistor here measures fine. So, you know, that is the main uh, current path. So, uh, you know, and it's not particularly high power. But there's nothing that's sort of, like, shorted out and taken out that. I think it's just, you know, it's just heated up and it's a poor quality resistor or whatever. Or it's just heated up for so long that it finally just went, died in the ass and... Uh, went open. Um, I've misplaced the transistor that I took out. It was in the socket here and I measured it and I've come back today and I can't find it. So our transistor's missing. Oh! It's got to be within the 50 square meters of this lab. I found it! I found it! <laughs> there it is! Sitting on the sponge. Oh! Yes, I know the sponge is dry. So there is the culprit. It's a little uh, carbon composition jobby. And uh, yeah, half a watt. It uh, looks more like a quarter watt resistor to me. It depends on the temperature. I have done a video on this. A lot of people don't know that just because a resistor is rated at a quarter watt or a half watt or one watt or whatever, uh, yeah, it can survive at that wattage. But you don't realize that that wattage is actually rated at a ridiculously high temperature. So if you're dissipating you know, half a watt in your half watt resistor, it's getting damn hot. Yes, technically it can survive. It's rated for that, but generally you don't want your components to get that hot. So, yeah. Anyway, so I have to uh, reassemble this, unfortunately, to test this. I can't just power it up. I've got to, like, physically go to the effort to at least uh, <laughs> do a modicum of reassembly to uh, test our theory that that's the resistor. And it should be. I'm 90 plus percent confident. Unless Murphy is uh, awake today, then, well, we could come a guts a bit. Confidence is high. I repeat, confidence is high. So it's not a lot of effort to put this back together I get or at least get it to a point where you can actually uh, power the thing up and uh, test your hypothesis but uh, or test your repair so anyway we'll just put a couple of screws back in there and just get the boards basically back and the soft start should power up again and yeah just a few screws just in case you don't want to come a guts or and have to unscrew them all again and we'll see if Murphy's sleeping today all right, it's back together. Let's power it up. I think I've got plugged in most stuff. Oh, there's a few. Oh, hang on. No, it's it. <laughs> the receiver in the bottom's uh, flapping around in the breeze. Need to put a screw in that. Yeah, you can't see it there, but there is like a metal um, RF uh, tuner on the uh, back. And uh, yeah, that's a metal can and you don't want that flapping around in there because it's just secured on the back by two screws. And if you don't put the screws in, it just flaps around in the breeze in the back and lays on uh, the top of the power supply board down there. So yeah, didn't want that. So that could ruin your day. 
Will it release the magic smoke? Will it work? And not our standby LEDs on. Wah, 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 wah. Oi, flashing. Now it's flashing. Wasn't doing that before. Wow. Just wondering if I forgot to plug something back in. But anyway, vacuum fluorescent display is not on. But that's that that's a, like a logic function. It's detecting something it's not happy about. Um, uh, let me give it a once over again. I may have forgotten to plug something in. Oh, you want to know what it was? The back of the board here was touching that power supply, which is grounded. And um, yeah, I like, well, yep. And it was, uh, it's, let's not do, let's not do it again. Hang on. Oh, no, hang on. Now it's flashing. I swear the display was working a second ago. Oh, God, it's, oh, what's going on? I swear I held it up like this and it was working. Okay, you can see the standby LEDs on. Hit that, it's not flashing. The display's working, the display's working, I swear. Look, game, it's very dim. Ox, there you go, TV, tape, it's working. Winner went, well, see, no, it just went and it flashed. Nah, there's, there's some sort of intermittent connection thing. Something's happening. Because I physically just moved that then. Okay, I'm going to put all these screws back in the back because they do hold all the boards in place. And of course, all the boards are right angle connected. So you could have a dodgy connection just uh, by you know, leaving some of the boards flapping around in the breeze. Right, so I screwed it all back together now. Uh, you know, the top's not on, but uh, yeah, everything's back in place. So nothing should be flapping around in the breeze now. And that's a problem with uh, these designs when all the boards are basically held together with uh, like physically with uh, screws into the back uh, panel and stuff like that. So anyway, let's power it up. There we go. We've got our standby, which should be the default mode. Whereas before, when we were actually uh, playing around with this, it would actually power up by default on so i don't believe that's the standard but i think this is correct so let's hit that volume it's very dim but that's common for vacuum fluorescent displays and i do remember it being very dim that just happens with age unfortunately yeah but anyway it's working again vcr dcr uh, game ox it's good enough to uh, make it usable like you can actually tweak the voltage and stuff for the uh, vacuum fluorescent display to make it brighter with age, but eventually you're gonna come a gutter and they just fail. It's a thing with uh, vacuum fluorescent uh, displays like this. Not a huge amount you can do about it. Um, we could modify it, but I'm happy that it's working. So that is a winner winner chicken dinner. Pretty sure it was dim like this originally. It is a uh, relative's one. I do remember it, uh, yes, yeah, slowly dying over the years. It's pretty old. It's like, at least 15 plus years old, I think. So, um, yeah, anyway, there you go. Yep, winner, winner, chicken dinner, we fixed it. It was, in the end, just a carbon film resistor that went open. But I hope you enjoyed that uh, you know, trip down the rabbit hole, the repair rabbit hole, where uh, due to the design and construction of this thing, we just had to, like, you know, slowly eliminate things one by one, check things. It was the last power supply that, that we actually measured. Let that be a lesson to you. Thou shall measure voltages. And, yeah, in terms of vacuum fluorescent displays, there are ones that are specifically negative uh, 35 volt rail that was dead, that uh, powered the vacuum fluorescent display, and that was it. It eventually went open. That happens with those carbon film resistors, you know, it, it is one of the failure modes. Um, and, yeah, whether or not it's just poorly rated, I mean, half a watt for, that looks like a standard quarter watt jobby to me. So, yeah, not terrific. So whether or not it gets hot and everything, I don't know, but... Anyway, there you go. Could be poor design. Could just be, I don't know, is this a standard fault in these sort of <laughs> units? But of course, if you were repairing these all the time, you'd, you know, get a, like a database of common faults and things like that. It's usually, you know, every product will have like a, like a classic Lewis Rossman repairing his MacBooks. Like there's, you know, like half a dozen major things that fail and that's, and that's pretty much it. That covers like 95% of his repairs or something like that. It's just like a handful of uh, common failures. 
videos and stuff like that. So I don't know if you've got one of these and you've had a similar photo, please let us know in the comments down below. But yep, yeah, that's an interesting exercise. And certainly I don't think um, in the end it was shorting against the chassis uh, there. It was, it, I think it was just the the connections are uh, because all the boards in here are basically held in place by like rear panel screws and stuff like that so we've got board to board inner connection if there's any dicky contacts in there um when they're all like flapping around in the breeze you just move something it can you know move two other boards and it just yeah and the ribbon cables and stuff like that it's uh, it's all a bit how you're doing but once it's all together that's fine that's rock yep still on rock solid there you go, no wackers. So <laughs> that works a treat. So anyway, yeah, in the end, that was a real easy fix, but sometimes you've got to go down that rabbit hole to find it. So that being said, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up, as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.